Why are you rendering that 200 layer comp on one machine? Do you mean there's no other way? I very much beg to differ. Let me introduce you to a wondrous workflow called network rendering. Learn better ways to render a whole project without having to use one computer taking up 12 hours of rendering time. Yes, it is possible. And this is the manual way to do it. So let's have a look at how we can do exactly that with some network rendering. There is an automated way to do it, but you've got to get tangled up with command line codes and all that jazz. And really, if you want to get into it, this is the best way to start. Having said that, you will need an NAS, a network attached storage, as the title kind of alluded to, for you to be able to do this. Luckily for you, I have two videos on NAS systems, Synology and QNAP, which I actually just put out last time, which are the perfect guide to getting started with NAS and can be used for this very purpose too. Just so you know, for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a Synology NAS connected to all of the computers on my network via ethernet. Network rendering is the ability to share the workload of a render project or render task across multiple computers on one network. When you're first working in a design team or you're working in a project with multiple people or different departments, it can be really frustrating having to break down that project into different components, render them out separately just to bring them all back together again. This is not only time consuming, it leads to many errors along the way as well. Having worked in a stop motion animation studio, I know the pain of having multiple shots spread across different compositors and then having to try and bring it all back together again to make one coherent scene. Yeah, don't like that. It'd be much handier, much easier, much more efficient if we could render that whole scene in one fell swoop. But most companies, most departments that you are working in when they are first set up do not have a way of working with each other directly. You might be working on computers connected to the same internet network, but they don't have shared storage and they're not all interconnected with each other. Instead, you're probably sharing things via cloud storage and instant messaging services like Slack, files being shared via the Adobe Cloud, G Drive, Box, Dropbox, whatever it might be. That's fine for storing your finished projects, your work in progress files with each other and you know, those sorts of things, but being able to access the live media right there between each other, that's what After Effects needs to be able to render your composition across multiple computers. What we're after is a way to share files with each other to be able to access the media inside of the projects all at the same time so that you can use the combined workhorse power of your computing department, what, and your whole company even. But Andy, does such a thing even exist? Yes, my appropriate. <laughs> yes, my pro tipping friends, it actually does. You need shared storage, and in my opinion, preferably an ass. Well, being able to render with the combined power of your departmental computers goes from having one computer with eight or 16 cores in its CPU to having quadruple, eight or 10 times that amount. That is a lot of computing power. Using this method, you can drive down the render time. However many computers you can get your hands on, connect them all together, use this method. You can push that render time right down and that is the difference between missing or meeting a deadline. That is the difference between having more time to be creative and that's what we're here for at DigiPro Tips. You've got more time, less frustrations. If you're working from external hard drives, a RAID setup, cloud storage, making sure they've uploaded it, you've downloaded it, you've synced it, you've exported it, you've uploaded it again, they've downloaded it again, they've watched the full project, it's okay. There's so many more headaches involved in making sure that each person, each team is rendering out the right part in the right way to bring it all back together again and it, oh, it's just a mess. With this, you don't have any of that. Whereas if you all save your project, working on a team project even, and you save it in one location, you open it up and you render using the combined workforce of your computer system, and that render is done. None of that upload, up, up, download, upload, download, no, none of that. And if there are errors, you can go back and you can fix it easily. You don't have to worry about finding out who's part of the composition that was, whose scene that was in, getting them to fix it, get that bit uploaded, sync it all again and fix that bit. No, don't worry about that. Well, actually it's super simple. And luckily for you pro tippers, those two videos I mentioned at the start, well, they go through the who, the why's, the what's, and why, where, how you should buy a NAS. For the easiest setup, go with the Synology, go with the QNAP, watch one of those two videos and come right back here. But also, 
you might want to check out my article on why you should have a 10 gigabit ethernet setup up here, which will make your workflow even faster. Then once you've got your shared storage set up, or if you've already got it set up and you're just itching to get that network rendering going, to bring down that render time, to hit those deliveries faster, to have more time to be creative, whatever it might be, then here we go. Okay, your shared storage is set up. The first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that every computer that is gonna be utilized in this workflow can access that shared storage and that they have the permissions of the folder and the files that you're going to be using in your project. They all need to have exactly the same permissions access so that they are not blocked when it comes to your server access. And whilst we're at it, make sure that every computer on the network that is gonna be involved has the same version of After Effects. If they are outdated, if they're using different versions of After Effects and make sure they've got the same plugins installed as well. If they don't, then you're gonna to come to issues when it comes to open it up on different computers that don't have the plugins, that don't have the right version because After Effects won't like it. And then make sure that every computer that is going to be using this has access to all of the media that's inside the project that you're gonna to use to finally render. Make sure they're all tidy, not on your desktop, not in your downloads, not wherever hidden folder you like to use it. Make sure it's all in one location on the shared storage so that every computer can access it. Once every computer has access, once every computer has the same version of After Effects, you need to save your project in one location on that shared storage, the final complete project, the one that is gonna be opened for the final time to render out. And then open it, open it on the computer that you just finished setting it up on. Whichever, it doesn't matter, just open it up on a computer. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to composition and add to render cube, like you always do. Now the vital step in this is to click best settings next to render settings, and you're going to choose multi-machine settings. Now this is important because once you then set everything in the render queue, you're going to save it again, but I'll tell you that in a minute, but it's gonna tell all of the other computers that open this project not to render from the first frame every time, to assign different computers different frames. That's what this will do. Make sure you have multi-machine settings clicked. Then you're gonna change the settings to be a PNG sequence. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that this workflow works best well, it only works with image sequences, really. You can't do this with a mod file. It has to be image sequences. It's slightly frustrating, I get it, but bringing it back into After Effects, putting it into Media Encoder, putting your sound design and whatever it is, it's easy. Don't worry about it. I like to choose a PNG sequence to keep the quality over a JPEG sequence. You could do a TIFF sequence, but the file sizes are so big, it's just not worth it. Now, once you've done those bits, you need to make sure that the render settings are using the best settings for your project. Now, an important part, you're gonna choose where the image sequence is gonna be output. And that's gonna to be to the shared storage. You're gonna create an output folder, or you might already have one, and you're gonna name it with an underscore, square bracket, hash, 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 square bracket. Why? Because those hashes are going to tell Net the After Effects render that you're gonna number each frame, and it's gonna know from each number where to start rendering the next one. Now, an important step, remember this, you've got to save it again, because it's gonna save all of those settings in your render queue, so that every time you open it on another computer in your network, it will have all of the settings in that render queue saved. And all you need to do, now that you've saved it, hit render. On that computer you were setting up all of these render settings, hit render, job done on that computer. Now, you're gonna to go to another computer, and you're gonna go and open that project on the shared storage, and you're going to go to the render queue because it will already be there, and you're gonna hit render. And what you're gonna notice, what you'll find, is that it's not gonna start rendering from frame one. It's gonna start rendering from a random frame, and another random frame after that. And then you're gonna to go to another computer, and you're gonna open it up, and you're gonna hit render again, and it will start doing the same thing and the same thing. And what you'll notice is the estimated time starts to go The more computers you have rendering frames, the shorter that rendering time is gonna be. It's amazing, right? It should be extremely noticeable how quickly your composition will render out using this workflow compared to when you were doing it on just one computer. Once the last frame has been rendered on whichever computer got to that frame first, it's kind of a sprint to see which one can do it, then you need to grab all of the frames and bring them back into After Effects and play them through just for quality assurance to make sure that everything's working the way it should. If there's any errors, go back and fix it. Render, you can just render those 
frames again if you want, or you can render the whole thing. It's up to you, but you can actually just render those frames and it will still work fine. If everything is present and correct, then you can then export that from After Effects or you can go into Premiere, add your sound design. You might even have your sound design in After Effects if you want to work that way. Or you can send it to Media Encoder and export as an MP4. Up to you. But it will take no time at all from there because the image sequence is already made. It's just re-wrapping it into a mov. The quick example I've showed here took a third less time using two computers compared to one. And that's a 2020 M1 MacBook Pro and a 2013 MacBook Pro you could easily reduce render times by twice, three times, four times. However many computers you've got, it will bring that down significantly each time you add a new computer onto the render task. So your client delivery file has taken absolutely no time at all. And really all you needed was some shared storage and some network bandwidth. Easy, right? Now, there is an automated way to do this. And Adobe has some instructions on its website about how you can take use of this. But as I said at the very beginning, you have to know your way around command line. So terminal in Mac and a Windows prompt in Windows, you have to be able to know how to use those properly to be able to use it. But it is very powerful if you are familiar with it. And if you want to learn how to do that, then take a look at the description and I'll put a link down there to how to automate the network rendering for After Effects. If you've watched this and you're itching to get going, but you've got no shared storage, then I suggest watch this video right here on QNAP NAS and get going.